The world runs on electricity, but where is that electricity coming from? Currently, most of the electricity comes from burning coal. But if we want to move forward as a civilization, we must focus more on renewable resources such as solar energy. Harnessing solar energy works like this. Light shines on a solar panel, which generates holes and electrons. The electrons and holes are then pulled to opposite sides of the device, producing a current. Sounds simple enough, but scientists and engineers have been working since the 1950s to perfect this phenomenon. The photovoltaic materials that are used to create these devices are very important. In recent years, there has been a lot of progress with a certain species of solar cell called a perovskite. In a period of about 11 years, research has gotten the efficiencies of these cells from 3% to almost 25%. However, the use of expensive whole transport layers and back contacts, along with the stability issues of perovskite solar cells, have proven to be detrimental when it comes to the commercialization of the technology. Because of this reason, our lab has been working on producing planar perovskite solar cells using low temperature solution processed tin oxide quantum dots as the electron transport layer and opting for a whole transport layer free carbon electrode. Our configuration paves the way to achieve a scalable, affordable, and highly efficient perovskite solar cell. We are using a multi-step fabrication process to produce a triple cation perovskite solar cell. Essentially, we use our spin coder to deposit a layer of tin oxide quantum dots onto the surface of our pre-cleaned indium doped tin oxide glass. The substrate is then annealed for one hour on a hot plate at 180 degrees Celsius. The substrate is then transferred to a nitrogen filled glove box where the triple cation perovskite is deposited by a two-step coating procedure. Immediately after the perovskite deposition, a color change to a dark red is seen, but when diethyl ether is drop casted onto the surface of the perovskite in the last five seconds of the second step, the film becomes transparent again. The film is then annealed at 100 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes, which brings back the dark red color. Lastly, carbon paste is doctor bladed onto the film and the film is annealed at 100 degrees Celsius for an additional 10 minutes. The X-ray diffraction pattern of the photoanode shows that the tin oxide quantum dots have a highly crystalline tetragonal rutile structure, and the perovskite's cubic crystalline structure aligns with the reported triple perovskite structure. Moreover, the presence of lead iodide peak at 12.38 degrees indicates excess lead iodide exists on the films, which could suppress perovskite degradation and increase reliability in ambient conditions. The surface morphology of the tin oxide quantum dots was examined by atomic force microscopy. The AFM image shows well dispersed tin oxide quantum dots with a relatively small quantum dot size distribution of around 3 nanometers. The films were found to be dense and pinhole free with a root mean square surface roughness of 1.67 nanometers which indicates that our deposition technique produced uniform, high quality, and smooth electron transport layers. Optimizing the tin oxide quantum dot concentration and thickness was crucial to the performance of our devices. We screened three different tin oxide quantum dot concentrations and compared those to a 3% colloid tin oxide solution, finding that 0.15 molarity tin oxide quantum dot was best suited for the electron transport layer due to its higher current density and lower open circuit resistance. We also screened three different spin coating speeds ranging from 3000 to 5000 RPM and found 4000 RPM to provide the best film density and the lowest sheet resistance. After optimizing the parameters for the tin oxide quantum dots, we examined the UV vis data and the extrapolation of the talc plots for our films. Using this data, the band gaps for tin oxide quantum dots, indium doped tin oxide, and perovskite material were found to be 3.72, 3.82, and 1.53 electron volts respectively. This indicates that the perovskite acts as an absorber, while tin oxide quantum dots and ITO act to block the UV spectrum. The high efficiency of the films can be partially attributed to the narrow band gap of the perovskite layer. In conclusion, we have successfully fabricated highly efficient and reproducible perovskite solar cells by using a tin oxide quantum dot electron transport layer and replacing the expensive whole transport layer and precious metal electrode with a carbon electrode. After we fine tune the tin oxide quantum dot parameters, we achieved a champion power convergence efficiency of 13.64%. The excellent cell performance is ascribed to the good conductivity and narrow band gap of the tin oxide quantum dot electron transport layer and perovskite respectively. The low temperature processability of tin oxide quantum dot electron transport layers and the use of carbon electrodes pave the way for high quality, cheap and flexible perovskite solar cells for commercial applications.